in oh no <laughs> I just done that with the wrong thumbnail of course I did oh well well last week had the uh, freeze dried Arctic field uh, da, 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 Arctic field ration from yeah last week I had the freeze dried Arctic field ration from Minotaur Trading Company. And Bob sent this in, and I opened it up the week before. And, uh, you know, I didn't even, I, I guess I just didn't pay attention that it was a ham slice, because <laughs> two weeks in a row it's going to be ham slice. So, there it is. Hey, and if you guys enjoy these live streams, don't forget to hit that thumbs up or down. Either way, doesn't matter to me. Just show your, uh, you know, what you're really thinking. Give, you know, thumbs up, up or down. And after this thing uploads later, the best thing you can do is comment. And if you missed my uh, previous, like, regular video that I uploaded, please go check that out. Uh, let me see if I can fix this thumbnail. Oh, yeah, no. Well, yeah, yeah, maybe I can. Hang on a second. Might take me just a minute. Um, copy. Nope. Download. Minnie's in there screaming. Download. Okay, let's see if... It's even possible for me to fix this on the fly. I doubt it is. I'll probably have to wait until it's over. But. Yep, it's not going to let me. Wait, let me see if there, what kind of options I have in here. Save a highlight. Share. Enable flash. Mute microphone. Nope, none of those. Now what's this one? Whoa. I can, like, add effects. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> this is, okay, I didn't know I could do this. Let's check this one out, okay. It's like uh, kind of a vintage TV vibe there. I had no idea that I could uh, add all these crazy weird um, filters on here. This is uh, one they call Haunt. Okay, this is cool, I kind of dig it. Let me go back to normal though. Back to normal. Yeah, I had no idea I could do that, guys. Here, let's, that's supposed to kind of enhance things a bit let's see what it's compared to normal uh, it's kind of that, that's a, maybe a little bit better actually yeah I'll go with that we'll, we'll stick with that what else do we have here go to live chat uh, make sure okay it's going into super chat like it's supposed to last week I couldn't read my super chats which sucked but yeah like I said if you guys enjoy this thumbs up thumbs down either way uh, will work. Got the, the everything I'm having right here came from Bob and Bob's box. So, Bob, if you're out there, if you're in the in the chat, I hope you are. Oh yeah, they are. Robert, there we go. What's up, Mine? Having your stuff tonight on the live stream. So, maybe two thumbs up. Hopefully, this is good. We'll find out. I have a box sitting here. Um. Uh, Oh, yeah, Dub C. Oh, yeah, and you're in the chat. JW sent me the freeze-dried beef patty. Uh, JW, I mean, I've seen a bunch. I watched a bunch of JW's videos. You guys go check out JW's uh, channel. I don't have... No, I do have a link to JW's channel in my description. It's new. I just put it there. So, ha, you guys can actually find JW's channel in my description. Like I said, if the, after this video uploads best thing you can do is comment on the video and uh that kind of shows interaction google might pick it up you know these li these live streams i get it these are more for the people that are here when it's live watching them back can be fun sometimes depending on how well i do with the live stream some of them suck some of them are all right uh none of them are spectacular i don't think um uh, i will be in new york this week and i do plan on doing some sort of walking around live stream if the weather permits probably do it like in, in, you know when it's still daylight so in between four and six o'clock something like that it, it, it's going to be fun maybe try to interview some people in the street if they're willing to be on camera um i'll probably have to break the ice by telling them that i host a show on the history channel so they don't feel so offended by someone asking them questions um let them look me up or whatever so I've, I've always thought that was a you know like a weird part hey jeff what's up man hey always enjoy your live streams well thank you jeff i super appreciate that and thank you for the super chat, man. I, I try to do the best I can with these things, and they've been a way for me to keep going whenever like, I was filming the show. I had a lot of stuff going on, 
You guys know I've been in and out of the hospital a couple times. You know, stuff happens. So uh, this is a way that I could keep going, and uh, I get to have rations with you guys, like live, and I get that interactive feedback. Can't ask for anything better, but Jeff, thanks again for that. Let me check and make sure that's going into my super chat list, and it didn't come up. Ha! It's messed up again. Come on. Okay, there it is. Jeff Kincannon. I think I said that correctly. Kincannon. Depending on how I, how quickly I want to pronounce that. You want to start off with a box really quick. I don't want this to get warm on me because it is still cold. I'm going to move this out of the way. I got a... Hey, what's up, guys? Um, I do have this box here from Jacob Hallenberger. I don't know how... I've got his address blocked out, but... This other sticker that's on here, the shipping label, which, I mean, if, if somebody was really trying hard, they could get some information off this ship, shipping label somehow through the barcodes and stuff. Um, let me take a marker and, and just mark this out one more time. So I know for sure his address isn't going to come out from behind the marker. Okay, and again, hopefully uh, that sticker doesn't give anything away, but let's go ahead and uh, let's see what's in this box that Jacob sent. I've had this thing for probably, uh, you know what, I, I, I might have got this before I went in the hospital, and then I've been filtering in boxes. I still have a box from Gabe, uh, Gabe Rilla, if you guys don't know that channel, you better go uh, check that out. We got some really cool, there, we did some Mothman videos there. A while back where we went down it and some interesting things happened i mean it's worth definitely worth the watch um so let me cut this bad boy open i have had this for a while like i said and uh i put it off a couple times not i don't know that i put it off just kind of went in order there to begin with and then last week i was going to do this one but i didn't want to clutter the live stream up with me opening a bunch of packages Alright, I'm going to have to do this up here so I can be a little more careful as to not cut myself. Okay, got that, got that. Got to do this side. Dude, that is some awesome tape that you used, by the way, Jacob. Uh, I don't know what kind of tape that is, but it's 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 awesome. Alright, let's just... Ugh. Well, maybe I didn't get... There we go. Nope, got to do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Looky there. <laughs> I should be able to drink a vintage beer a week for at least a year. <laughs> look at that. That is a classic look right there, is it not? That's how I remember them looking when I was a kid. Saw a lot of this stuff in my household growing up. A lot of Bud Budweiser. Look at that can. That is sharp. I don't know. There's something about their 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 logo and the way that the colors, that dark blue with the red and the white background, really just kind of pops and makes. I mean, it's an iconic brand, first of all. Let's see here. Is that a that is some sort of date code? Six zero seven three one D's three zero zero. See, Budweiser used to do the born on dates. August. 1996, the 1st of August, 1996. This is actually pretty old for a Budweiser to be laying around. Let's see, 96, 06, 16, that's 24, 20, 25 years old. That's a 25-year-old Budweiser. It doesn't look 25 years old, does it? Uh, YouTube's not showing the stream? Yeah, that figures. Let me, uh, real quick, guys, I hate doing this to you guys, but, uh, let me make an announcement really quick, make a post about this live stream. If you guys don't mind, I will grab a link. Man, yeah, that thumbnail is awful. Um, copy link. Yeah, it, it just unfortunately just used that picture. I forgot to upload the thumbnail at the beginning of the live stream. So I really did a number on this one, but I don't think I can fix it, unfortunately. All right, let's make a post real quick. Create a post. Delete the thumbnail. I'm going with the pink. Oh, come on. Really? 
Well, that's not going to let me use the thumbnail that I have made because I saved it off of Slack. I hate it when it does that. Uh, I, I'd say RC Gusto should be here. Um, guys, got to go check out RC Gusto's channel while I'm uh, making this post. And also, Dub C, Dub C link to him and Dub C store. You get like 10% off or $10 off or something like that if you're a first time customer. If you guys go down there in my description, you'll see the links to that. But uh, he's out in like a, uh, like a little snow. It's kind of like an igloo, I guess. But he's actually watching the stream from like an igloo. It's like 30 degrees. Uh, da -da -da -da. Live now, folks. Come and join us. Post. Uh, Josh. Josh McCuga started the Good People's Association, I believe is what it's called. And he does live streams like every day. And it's not just him. It's him and Kim Knapsock and uh, also Josh's wife, which is having a baby. Uh, Josh being the co-host of Eating History, but he's having a baby like... Uh, this week he's having a baby this week so you guys go over there and uh you know support josh in his new endeavor that he's got going on over there i've been going over there and donating in his uh live streams and stuff a bush how old is this one this is a 97 same era it's almost like someone put these on their top of their refrigerator and forgot about them that's so cool, though. Love the vintage advertising. Even though it's... Okay, so that one's 24 years old. It, it's still vintage, though. Like, that advertising is still vintage. No way. Oh, this is a cool one. Man, I was watching uh, Deadpool the other day. And believe it or not, in the background, I saw... Uh, I think it... I don't know if I have the can here. It was either one of the yellow World's Fair beers, like this is the green one. That is so, that is a really nice can. Really nice. Is this going to tell me what year this one is? 70, 82. Oh, that, okay, so they made different colors. This is the green. I've had the yellow. And I think that like certain colors are uh, more limited than others. And I tried to look up some information about that Harley beer that I have tonight. And I uh, couldn't find anything really except sale, like for sale information. Oh, another treaty beer! I have one of these, dude. That's awesome. Ah, I didn't want to drink the other one because honestly, I didn't want to drink the other one because I thought it was just too cool to open. Because I don't know, just something about that, about this, the way they went about their advertising on this is just, uh, I don't know. It's almost too much, it's, but I love it. The working man. The work of treaty beer. Stop treaty abuse. Just taxes. Uh, true brew of, you know, true brew of uh, the working man, I guess is how that would be read. Yep. Treaty beer, tax dollars, land claims, fishing rights, hunting rights, water rights, equal rights. And I'd love to know the exact date on this one. Is there a date on this one? I'm going to guess this one's probably like right around 1980. 1979, 1980. This could also be, yeah, I would say 1979, 1980. Maybe 81, somewhere along there. we got one more in here, it feels like. Make sure there's not a note. It's not looking like there is. But did a good job shipping them, man. Everything showed up uh, intact, not busted. Ooh, look at that. Milwaukee's best. Uh, Miller Lite, boys. That used to be... Uh, look at that can, though. That's got some bling to it. It's got, like, a design in there. I think that's meant to be there. Or that might be from the bubble wrap, actually. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> it's from the bubble wrap. It's, it's not supposed to be there. It's just supposed to be this amazingly shiny aluminum can. That is pretty sweet. This one is from... I'm going to guess 97. 
Nope, that's a 37. Eh, I don't know. I don't know about this one. Let me look it over here. 1-800 Miller 6. Carefully brewed, blah, blah, blah. Union made. I got no problem with unions. Worked union most of my life. All right. Well, that was an awesome box, Jacob. Thank you so much for those uh, new brews that we got here. Got us a Budweiser. Got us some Milwaukee's Best. Got some classics here. A Bush. And then we got the Treaty and the World's Fair beer. That is one heck of a collection. I dig it. I dig it, man. I, I'm getting quite the collection of empties going on, too, by the way. And I would love to open this Harley beer from the bottom to keep it to keep that intact look because honestly when you're collecting cans if you just have like an open top can sitting like and it's open it's just not as cool as having a can sitting on your shelf that looks like that right didn't that look a whole lot cooler this is completely empty this old style because I poked holes in the bottom of it so I ended up rinsing it out, but it looks like there's a little bit of water left in there. Yep, doesn't smell like beer or anything. Same with this one. This one was easy to poke the holes in the bottom, but this was an awful beer. Absolutely awful. Made me gag. All right, so uh, 89. Whew, 99, 09, 19, that's 30. 32-year-old beer. 32-year-old beer. To go along with my... Roughly probably about 30 to 28 year old MRE. Ugh, all right. I've, all right. The beer's cold. I think it's just time to. And I almost want to poke holes in the bottom of that. I do. Just to save the can for display purposes. But you know what? I got two more of these that he sent me for. Uh, for my collection display actually one that i could share with the museum or anybody else who wants it uh or would you know a collector that i might know all right i'm gonna open it we're gonna get that satisfying you guys think i should plug the microphone in by the way i don't have it plugged in did that make me sound any different Hey, RC Gusto Ham Slice was my first ever. Glad I get to watch tonight. Well, I'm glad you're here, buddy. And uh, thank you for everything you do over there and donating to St. Jude's and everything. Everything from RC Gusto's channel goes to St. Jude's, by the way, guys. And St. Jude's is one of the best, if not, in my opinion, well, it is. It's one of the best things that you can donate to out there. <clears throat> Definitely a great organization. So props to RC Gusto for doing what he does. So thank you for that super chat, my friend. <sighs> Thirty-two year old beer. I guess this isn't bad compared to uh, some of the other stuff that I've done, like like this thing, steel can, absolutely horrendous beer. Um, I can't remember what the one I had two weeks ago was, but it was it was gag worthy. It was everything I could do to not gag when I tried to take a sip of that thing. Uh, I guess I've, I've drank some pretty disgusting beers on here, to be 100% honest. I guess we just keep these bad boys in the frame right now, since uh kind of is what, what's, what I'm doing. All right. All right. Let's just... Man, look how dry my hands are. Yeah, that's not good. And I put lotion on them on occasion, too. Look at that. I want to bubble right out of there. So with an old... Like, this thing was not shooken up at all. And it's going to have a head on it because it's so old. Oh, boy. Does that have a very harsh smell to it. It's very potent. I mean, the malt just slaps you in the face got a very malty scent to it it smells like a dark beer uh, definitely smells like a dark beer let's see something here a 
little jar here that had the uh, Renee apple butter in it at one point. Hey, easy now. Every time I'm knocking over these stupid Tabascos. But yeah, the jar had uh, apple butter from Renee in it. Let's put just a little tiny bit in this glass just to see what it looks like. Holy cow. Uh, of course, I spilled it. Because why not? That's what I do. Make a mess. Right? Okay. Hang on. So, definitely got a... It's, it's dark. It's not the darkest I've seen. Uh, I would almost call it, like, in the middle, as far as how dark it is. It's pretty dark. But, wow, that smell. What is that? It's almost got, like, a... Like a lemongrass scent to it. Definitely picking up lemon. It, it almost burns my nose. It's so uh, it's so strong smelling. Okay. I'm just going to have to quit talking about it. You know how this goes. Uh, just got to man up. Just got to man up here and just do it. All right. Turn the camera around. Put the camera down some. Remember, I just need to shut up and drink it. Just shut up and drink it. If I remember right. Oh, you drank one? Yeah, it's it definitely doesn't smell fresh. I'm glad it's cold though. I'm glad I'm glad I at least made it cold. It's definitely got a, a really strong like kind of a lemon scent to it, lemongrass kinda. <laughs> Daniel. Uh alright, here we go. I'm getting to be a pro at this, I guess. I mean, I guess enough practice makes perfect, right? My mouth is just puckering already. Like watering. <sighs> Deep breath, down the hatch. Oh. <sighs> carbonated that's a good thing uh, so the aftertaste is nowhere near as bad as it is going down um, you know 32 years old it's been stored fairly well I would say that you know a lot of people would put these up as collectibles so I'd say it didn't have too harsh of a life probably spent some time on a shelf maybe even some time in a fridge for a while you know Hit that thumbs up, guys, if you like uh, if you like Harley Davidson. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm a Harley fan or not. Kind of am. I kind of you know. Yeah, I kind of am. I like I like the culture and everything around it. The bikes, yeah, the new ones I guess ain't bad. Okay, the stank beer head shake was worth another four. <laughs> Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate the super chat, Gusto. Uh, I guess I have the appropriate shirt on for this uh, for this beer, right? It's my. I, think, oh, I thought it said "Appetite for Destruction" on it, but yeah, that's what this shirt is: "Appetite for Destruction" tour or whatever. Uh, Yeah, it makes makes my mouth pucker. That's for sure. Just gotta get it. Just gotta get it down the hatch. Oh. Yeah, the aftertaste is nowhere near as bad as it is, like actually going down. Some of these beers that I've had, the aftertaste is what just kills it and just makes you know it makes me want to gag and then I'll, and I'll tell you something else sometimes it's the texture sometimes it's like really thick 
and of course it'll be you know you'll get them chunks in it some especially towards the bottom and towards yeah about halfway and, and further down but if you like this beer right here like it's not so bad because it's not got that really weird real heavy viscous texture like almost trying to drink slime or something it sometimes it just Hey, what's up, Ration Museum? You guys got to go to the Ration Museum live stream tomorrow. Uh, and every Sunday, for that matter, we're really trying to get that Ration Museum built up. So come and join us. Give us your two cents. Let us know what you think. We'll make the Ration Museum a better place. And make it like... We, we, we want the Ration Museum to be something that everybody... When you say, oh yeah, the Ration Museum, everybody just immediately recognizes what you're talking about. So uh, focus on me, camera. There you go. I got about, you know, even if I was drinking a fresh beer, a little, I guess a little bit about me, if I was going to drink this as a fresh, or just, you know, a fresh beer, first of all, it would probably be a light beer, because I'm not real big on the heavy stuff, but I would probably drink it in two to three drinks. Like, even if it was cold, I would I would force myself to chug half the can at once, or at least a third, because... I just don't like alcohol. <laughs> I just don't like it. Uh, I, not beer, not whiskey, not vodka, not... I, I just... I'm not a fan of it. Uh, looking forward to the ham slice to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the MRE. That's a good point, man. I should add that to my thumbnail... Or my... Uh, not thumbnail, but the uh, the title. Yeah, w let's talk about that while... while uh, so, here, let me just finish this. Oh, there was something in the bottom. Oh, oh, I didn't see that coming. Oh, typically I'm prepared for it, but I was not. I didn't think that would happen. Oh, oh my God. All right, I got to show you guys this. Hang on, let me flip the camera around. You see this? Okay, that's nothing. Well, look, it's all. Oh my. Okay, I just swallowed a big old chunk of it, though. Uh, oh man, I did not expect that. I did not see it coming, guys. Oh boy, I wish you could see inside this can. Maybe you can. Hang on, let's see. Let me get get my little light out. Hang on. Excuse me. Sorry, guys. Hang on. It's not going to work. Oh. Can I get it to focus? Hang on. Got to have enough light in there is the problem. Just, I guess you're just going to have to take my word for it, but uh, I think I ate the biggest chunk out of this. Um, <laughs> pour the beers in a glass, Mojo. That, yeah, you know, I've thought about that, but I don't know that I would drink them if I could see what was in them. Does that make sense? Because it's like really hard for me to drink them as it is. Um, <laughs> uh Oh boy, yeah, that was a that was a good one, guys. I, I really, like I said, I didn't expect that, and uh, it slapped me right in the face. So yeah, the fortieth anniversary, technically the forty first, but we'll call it the fortieth. Um, the fortieth anniversary of the MRE. Boy, have they came a long ways. Kind of, still in retort pouches, you know. How can you improve on that technology? I don't know. I really, you know, I, I've, I've thought about this. I've honestly put thought into how can you improve what we already have, other than just changing the items themselves. You know, the contents. I'm talking about actually improving the packaging, the way it's, you know, the way it's presented, and and things like that. 
you know, of course, the British went with the boxes for years, many years. Uh, their, their rations, 24-hour rations, were in a box. I don't think, of course, we have our 24-hour, quote-unquote, 24-hour first strike ration, which is not really a 24-hour ration. It's kind of a really skimmed down, cut down, bare bones minimum what you need to get by for 24 hours, you know, restricted calories, all that, you know, the whole nine yards. So, you know, I still want to build my own United States military 24-hour ration, what I think that they should put in a 24-hour ration. I want to do that. Like, I've been wanting to do that for years. I don't know why I haven't just you know, bucked up and done it. But uh, that's something I really do want to do. And now that Bob's got all those uh, printing options where he can he can print labels and stuff like that, I might have him print me up a really cool uh, official-looking 24-hour, you know, U.S. MRE label. And I want to put it in a box, you know, about, about the same size as what the British roll with because I don't want it to be overly huge. I don't want it to be overly heavy. And I, I'm not going to use freeze-dried items in it because that's not what they would do. But I am going to add items that wouldn't be like I've, I've – here's how I've thought about doing it is taking three MREs and then adding some extra items to it. Um, so I'd basically be stuck with just whatever they put in those three MREs and then adding some extras on top of that to make it round out a little bit better. Because for years, the tacos were all messed up. Uh, sometimes they just get the menus wrong. I mean – Let's be honest. The gravy, the the sausage gravy MRE should have biscuits with it. Like it just makes common sense for for it to have biscuits, and uh, they they don't put the biscuit with it. So <laughs> it's like, why not? Uh, I think they did for one year, 2012 or 2011, something like that. But so we're talking, you know, a solid 40 years that guys in the military, have been eating MREs. So you have literally generations of guys that only knew this as their military food. Whenever they were in, whenever they served, they only knew MREs. They didn't know anything. They never had to eat an MCI. They've probably never even seen an MCI. You know, the way ration culture has, has expanded, a lot of people have seen them now. But uh, it wasn't something that, you know, once once the run for MCIs was done and over with. The extra was sold off into civilian markets and, and surplus stores. And, you know, the guys that that enroll, you know, that went into the military back in the 80s, early 80s, they didn't have to see MCIs, so they didn't care. They didn't, you know, they, they, I wonder what kind of rations those guys were eating before. Not a common question that you would hear out of a guy, out of an enlisted guy. <clears throat> I need to, uh, I got a bunch of text messages I need to answer, but, uh, let me see if I can at least check a couple of them. So, yeah, th this particular MRE, I don't know exactly what year this is. Hey, hey, Robert or Bob, can you tell me what year this is? I thought you sent a note with this, but I, I went back and looked in the box and didn't find the note. So, may, if you did send the note, maybe I lost it. And anybody who checks out this live stream who hasn't seen uh, the fact that I've got a, a regular video put up here that's only, it's only 11 minutes and uh, 43 seconds. Right here it is. If you haven't checked out that video yet. Oh, sorry. That's not what I meant to do. If you haven't checked out that video yet, right there, please do and share it with uh, anybody you know. Share it on your Facebook, your, you know, anything that would be ration, anybody would have a ration interest, I guess. All right, we're going to get into this bad boy. Let me find my razor knife here. What do I do with it? misplace that thing all the time there we go there's the green one got this from uh this came from minotaur they got all kinds of uh survival gear and equipment too so stuff like this this is the top let's find out what year this thing is 
Maybe Bob answered. Let me look in the comments real quick. My nose is clogged up. Okay, Bobby said, no idea. Well, Bob, do you have any idea what kind of condition this thing is? is okay, I got the one and the old omelet for my buddy. And he ate the omelet. And I ate the omelet one, especially the oatmeal cookie bar. <laughs> so you actually ate the omelet MRE? So this is probably going to be edible then. Wow, okay, cool. Canadian rusks were in when I was uh, early to mid-90s. Canadian rusks? What's a rusks? What's, what's a rusk? Alright, let's go, guys. We're going to check this bad boy out. Again, the MRE, <laughs> like G. Schultz mentioned, 40 years old. 40 years old. Look at that. What is, what is that? A drink mix? I don't know. Alright, let's go. We're going to go slow. We're going to take it out one item at a time. Usually I dump the whole thing out. What do we have here? Oh, all gratin potatoes. I love me some all gratin potatoes. Looks like we're going to have a 1991. This is a great year for the MRE. Almost all the 1991s and 92s that I've ever had, even ones that were stored poorly, were in pretty decent shape. I don't know why these held up better than most, but... There we go. 1991 is what it's looking like. What else we have here? Oh, really nice looking accessory packet there. There's a list of ingredients. Coffee. Instant. Cream. Substitute. Sugar. Salt. Chewing gum. Matches. Toilet tissue. Hand cleaner. Made by Simpack. Out of good old Cincinnati. Not far from me. Oh, here we go. First year of the brown spoon, guys. It's either 1991 or 1992. Or, I mean, 1990. I think 1991 was the first year. So we have a first year of issue here of the brown spoon. Some weird packaging it's in, too. Like really soft plastic. What else do we have in here? Is this what I think it is? Uh, that's what I thought. Good old brownie chocolate covered. That's probably going to be um, no good. <laughs> they never are. What do we have here? A lemon lime beverage powder that is, um, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's going to be more like taffy than it is going to be like a drink mix. But that's okay. I actually, have a spare drink mix setting off to the side right here from last week. What else do we have in here? Ooh, nice. Cocoa beverage powder type 1 fortified. Yummy. Looking forward to that already. Please be peanut butter. Oh, apple jelly. Okay, cool. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Next up we have our MRE crackers. Boy, they really went basic on the labeling there, didn't they? 120th day of 1991. Oh, I need to go get my nasal spray. And last but definitely not least, we have our ham slice with natural juices. Okay, so I want to I want to talk about a, a video that I happened upon uh, two or three days ago that I had never watched before. I don't know if you guys are familiar with a channel called Dope or Nope. Okay, they uh, they look at products, they rate them dope. Or no, like good or bad, you know? So they had an MRE video. MRE items versus gourmet of, of you know, gourmet counterparts. So if it was beef stew, they had like a fancy beef stew. If it was uh, shredded beef and barbecue sauce, they had like a, a, a shredded beef and barbecue sauce on the gourmet side. So these two guys, blindfolded, tried out MREs and... I'm going. To, I'm here to tell you guys. I have never seen two bigger babies in my entire life. They made MREs look like they were the worst thing ever produced in the food realm. I was very disappointed in watching that video. I was very disappointed in the way that they acted because they at least should have taken into the consideration that you know troops eat these things on a daily basis, and they were they were. Bitting them out, and like it, it just, I would. I, look, 
they make they get millions of views anyway, so it's not you know it's not like I'm helping them out or anything. But definitely go look at that video. Tell me what you guys think. Like, tell me like, am I being biased here? Am I, am I like, because I like their channel. I, I like watching their videos. Um, but man, oh man, like I'm not one to really complain a whole lot on on my live streams or videos at all. Like, but boy, that one right there kind of bothered me. <laughs> I'm gonna lie. Well, this thing is glued to the max. I gotta say, Bob, this thing's looking pretty good. And I can't get it open. I'm just gonna have to rip the box, I guess. That's a cool box, too. That horizontal printing like that. Let me see if I can just take the knife and cut it open. I mean, look at this. Ugh. It's pretty good. Okay. Look at this thing. Look at that. It looks like a, it's square. Look at the corner on that bad boy. What the heck? I, use, I, I don't think that's normal, really. I don't remember ham slices being squared off like that, like a piece of, uh, kind of like a piece of spam or something. All right, let's get the uh, all gratin potatoes. Seventy second day, but yeah, those guys were eating fresh MREs and cringing over them. Fresh MREs. I mean, I've eaten some really old food and and absolutely enjoyed it. Hopefully, there will be another one of those cases. If not, I have backup food for Minotaur on the side right here that we'll check out. All gratin, seventy second day. All right, let me go heat this stuff up. Throw it, well, I'm going to throw it in some water, and I will be right back. Okay. See, I do have uh, I do have a big old box of food here on the side that we'll check out. Let me get this stuff over here, and we'll look at this accessory packet. Get everything on the tray. Boom. Yeah, man. I hope this I hope this thing's edible. All right. Brownie. Drink mix is not going to be any good. Some apple jelly, oh. crackers, and good old cocoa beverage powder. But yeah, I do have this uh, pineapple guava drink mix from leftover from last week, so we'll use that in place of this. But we will take a look at this. Let's just go ahead and do that real quick. Well, open the accessory packet. <clears throat> There. This is technically the top. There we go. Looky there. Oh, that feels perfect. It's actually like thick. Look at that. It's like a bunch of coffee in there. And it doesn't, man, that, that feels perfect. That is, huh. 
that's a good sign. You know, I don't have luck with Taster's Choice, not with the red or brown packs, usually. Okay, here we have a Tabasco that's about, eh, about a third of the way gone. <laughs> I don't know what happens to these things. Do they leak out? Do they not, did they not fill this thing initially, you know, when they, when they first packaged it? Which is what I think has happened. That's a good question, though. I would like to have the answer to. Next up, we have our Creamer from National Brands. I do like this this branding as well with the Eagle, American Eagle up there. Three grams of that. Ooh, look at that list. Corn syrup solids. Partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. May contain one or more of the following. Wow. Yeah, that's a list. Yeah, buddy. And we have our Sugar from Domino. Great classic. Six grams of sugar. Bob, if you're watching, six grams of sugar for a cup of coffee. <laughs> Wet nap. Moist towelette. That's, uh, this is Steve's favorite, by the way. And uh, I guess, I mean, how you how you know is the ones with these vertical black lines. It says wet nap, moist toilet. That's Steve's favorite wet nap, or it used to be. I'd uh, salt, four grams. We won't be needing that with a ham slice. Here is our U.S. issued butt ration, or toilet paper, or napkin, whatever you want to use it for. This is the classic. This is before they switched over to the uh, the roll instead of the fold. This is the fold. Here we have our matches made by good old Dee Dee Bean and Sons, North Carolina. These are some really funky looking red tips, black matches, strike on back. And we have our chiclet style gum. It's not looking so hot. Might have a slight smell of Tabasco to it, maybe. Uh, I mean, it's very, very faint, if so. And typically, I would make a mochaccino, but for some reason, I, you know, I, I just want to see, I just want to see how this taster's choice is held up. Well, let's find out. Looking pretty good so far, Bob. I gotta say. Hey, what's up, Inberto? Just saw your name pop up there. Bus stop. I saw in there. Miss Sharon. Look at that. I didn't even think to dump some in my hand first. Look at that. That is an unusual sight for me to have Taster's Choice. Look how much is in there, too. Like, I think this actually had a little bit more than what it was supposed to. Just, I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, doesn't that look like more coffee than you typically get in one of these? I mean, I know it's supposed to be measured out to two and a half grams, I think, but... Let's see, does this say? It does not say. I, I swear that looks like way more coffee than uh, than I typically get. Okay. Whoops. Of course I dropped it. Ugh. Sugar. Oh, that's a little chunky. A little bit of a lot chunky so this thing definitely had some moisture get to it at some point it's not gonna hurt that sugar at all I'll show you all what I mean here in just one second look at that. kind of chunky oh those are solid chunks too hopefully they'll dissolve because I do have some extremely hot water on standby here All right, if you guys know anybody in New York City uh, that wants to, I don't know, meet up, film a video, anything like that, uh, you guys hit me up. Oh, got a couple ideas of what I might do, but, uh, you know, we'll see. See if it pans out. A ah, couple food channels I've talked to, contacted. I'll be there. Maybe we can meet up. All right, let's see what happens with the sugar. All right. It's a pretty decent cup of coffee right there, it looks like to me. 
just going to set that off to the side right here real quick. And we are also going to do, <coughs> excuse me, the cocoa beverage powder right now. Then I'm going to have to go get that ham slice out. We're, uh, what was I going to say? Huh. Lost my train of thought. Oh, well. Must not have been important, huh? Oh, 4MRE.com. They got cases of first strike rations and MREs. And if you use the code, uh, is it Old Smoky 10 or OS 10? Hang on, I, I'm not sure. It's in, it's in the description. There's a code that you can use over at 4MRE.com to get yourself $10 off of a case of first strike rations or MREs. Look at that, that's a lot of powder. You know what, I better try that before I dump this water in it. It's a little more than I need. Alright. There we go, give it a try. Yep, I think that's going to be okay. Nice and sweet. That light cocoa flavor. Yum. Yeah, I'd probably take a little bit more water. I think it should go down because the powder is holding it up a little bit right now. Oh, it's OS10. Okay, same as what it is for uh, for Minotaur. OS10. I wasn't sure about that. I mean, I, I knew I knew it, but I didn't know it. <laughs> I just I'd forgotten it. It's been one of those weeks, folks. All right, MRE spoon real quick. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this cocoa beverage powder. I can tell you that already. That apple jam, usually I would need that, but I'm not going to this time. Because last time I did that, I ended up with like a bunch of liquid, which I'd say is probably going to have a bunch of liquid this time too. But, uh... All right. Be right back. kitty there we go let's get on to the rest of this I want to look at this lemon lime uh, lemon lime uh, taffy <laughs> that's what it's going to end up being it's not going to be I mean, it's how do I want to open this let me take a second real quick to thank everyone and I can't see my super chats. Of course. Maybe if I scroll back up. Okay. So Gusto sent in two super chats. Uh, Jeff sent in a super chat. And I can't remember who else. By the way, guys, History Savior 1941, his, um, his contest is ending this week. So you guys go over there and get yourselves entered for that contest that he's having. Oh, it's 
that's definitely not a color that I was expecting. Ay, ay, ay. Alright. I'm going to try this, actually. I'll try that piece. You know what? <laughs> That's actually not bad. That's like candy. It might not look the greatest because of that brown tint that it has, but... I mean, it's got that nice lemon-lime flavor. It's sweet. It's kind of chewy. It's tangy. It doesn't have an off flavor to it or anything. I like that. I might actually eat that. <laughs> I know it's <laughs> kind of weird, but... Oh well. Alright, let's uh, cut open this dreaded... I have one... I think I've had one. Out of all the MREs that I've ever eaten, especially vintage MREs, I think I've only had one brownie chocolate covered that was edible. That was actually good and edible. And it, when I say good, I mean I just mean edible. That's all I mean. I don't mean that it tasted good because these things... I. I don't think they were ever good. Okay, it, it 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 smells. I don't know how to describe that. It doesn't smell like anything that. It don't smell like a brownie. I don't even know what that smells like. It's like. Uh. It's it's almost got like a rotten vegetable smell to it. You know, like if you uh, forget about a tomato or something, or a, you know, an onion and a tomato, sitting there, something like that. It's got this, or old lettuce. It's got a very strange scent to it. Very strange. A smell that shouldn't be coming from a brownie. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll check it out here in a minute. Never an item that I'm glad to see. <laughs> in an MRE is a chocolate covered brownie. Now the crackers, on the other hand, love seeing these. Ooh, that had a really nice hiss to it. You guys didn't hear it because I let it go too fast, but uh, yeah, it had a good one. A really nice release of that vacuum. Air rushing in, filling up the package with air. All right, give this another stir real quick. All right, crackers. Uh... Okay. Whoo, those are hot, hot, hot. Extremely hot, hot, hot. Whoo. I was just digging through the last of the box you sent my way, Carson. I had to put my Glock sight mounting plates and found them in the box along with the goodies. It was a super day that day. Cool, cool. Carson's good at sending good boxes. I know that. Got a killer box from Carson there. Couple years ago, maybe now. At least a year. Yeah, a couple years ago, probably. Whoa. Okay, well, so these don't look like the all gratin potatoes now. These are chunked potatoes. These are, you know, little square chunks of potatoes. Whereas now they're actually sliced potatoes. And, uh, those look a little dark. I'm not going to lie. They look a little dark. They smell a little sharp. <laughs> they smell like some really strong cheddar cheese. Alright, here we go. Look at that. That's a big old fat slab of ham. Some hot ham water, of course. Oh, wow. That's a big old chunk. Look at them squared off edges. That's something else. What well, smells really good though? Holy cows, it smells good. That smells 
fantastic. Oh, man, it just smells like a really good... It smells like Thanksgiving. It smells like a, a ham that you would just cook on Thanksgiving. It really has that scent, that aroma coming off of it. It's really, really nice. Let's find out. Oh, it's really tender. Look at that. So there's the uh, squared off corner that I was talking about, seeing through the package. Very, <laughs> very 90 degree corner. So of course this is pressed and formed ham, but it's looking pretty good. Looks nice and juicy. Look at that. So, I mean, it's definitely uh, processed, but man, it, it does. It smells really good. Has a really nice pork smell to it. Uh, I mean, almost can almost pick up like a bacon scent in it. I don't know. Here we go. Down the hatch. Oops. Oh, yeah, that's nice and juicy so far. I'm not tasting anything weird yet. Yeah, I think that's okay. Very good, actually. Hey, Mulder13 with a $5 super chat. Well, thank you so much, Mulder, for the super chat. I really, really appreciate that. You, you didn't type anything there, but I, man, oh, man, thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. All right, let's juice it up <laughs> before this stuff solidifies and... Uh, I won't want anything to do with it. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. It's kind of like... Can you guys see that? It's like sectioned off in the center there. It's like separating. Hmm. I got to I gotta go for another bite here. Just roll it around in that juice and take a bite. Mm. It is salty. I will say that. It's definitely salty. I think the crackers are really going to complement it well. I want to take a bite of one of these crackers first. Just to try it on its own. Kind of more toasted on this side than this side. Which is pretty normal. Like the oven that they're in, one side get hot gets hotter than the other. Hmm. I'll tell you what, this era right here of MRE cracker tastes a lot closer to a regular saltine cracker than any other era of MRE cracker. Of course, it's dry. It doesn't have that really sharp malted barley flavor that you get sometimes in the MRE, crack, MRE crackers. This is more of a... A lot more of flour type flavor. There is something in there that's a little bit savory, though. I'm not sure what that is. Whoa, CT with a big super chat there. Passed through West Virginia today, but was on the wrong side. You live in a hard-to-get-to place. <laughs> yeah, dude. I live where nobody ever comes to. <laughs> Thank you for that super chat, CT. But, yeah, you are correct, man. Um, nobody ever comes through here, man. This is just a... Unless you're driving 64. If you're driving 64, which will take you past Huntington and Charleston, uh, then, then you're pretty close to me. Like, I, I could drive and meet you in no time but if you're driving up in the northern panhandle area i mean that's like a four hour drive like that's that's the whole other side of the state or like the beckley area that's again that's a four hour three four hour drive something like that very far away 
for being, you know, for, for West Virginia. All right, I got to try it with, with the, it's, it's going to be good. Want to visit Thurman, West Virginia? What's in Thurman? Mm. He's on I-81. What, or, yeah, 81. Hmm, I got to look that up. Oh, okay. Rail history, okay. Is that where the Castlinic Railroad is? I-81 in West Virginia. Interstate 81, West Virginia. Okay. So my phone is not working currently, I guess. Let me try my other phone here. Oh, yeah. You just you just clipped the panhandle, dude. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the map here. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So I-81 just cuts through the panhandle up here in West Virginia. Of course, you can see it there, but I live over here. Where that blue dot is, he went through over there. So yeah, that's like a four, four and a half hour drive probably. Maybe even a little bit longer, depending on what, what roads I'd have to take to get there. Go on, cat. Yeah, you were definitely in the wrong area for me. Um, it may have been Virginia. I was drinking. Can't remember. <laughs> I'll bet you was. Uh, thank you for that super chat, dude. No, it does. It does pass through West Virginia. Uh, just you, you cut through the the very end, the very tip of the panhandle of West Virginia. So, yeah, you very well. I'd say you did. I mean, if you drove through 81 on there, then you went through that little tiny part of West Virginia up there. All right, I got to go with one potato here because I'm, I'm kind of scared of these, to be honest. All right, here we go. Down the hatch. Hmm. Okay. They taste a little bit weird, but the texture's good. nothing bitter a lot of times with these when they're bad i'll get this really sharp bitter like dry your tongue out type of uh flavor there's something a little bit off with the flavor on these but i think they're fine i mean they, they taste okay they're not great by any stretch of the word um I didn't mean to do that. All right, a little bit of everything. Yep, all gratin. Uh -huh. Which these are all gratin potatoes. We have scallop potatoes now, right? Or are they all gratin? Hmm. I'm getting confused. Let me see if I can get that cheese <laughs> soaked up out of there. Looks awful. The ham is great. Absolutely perfect. I could easily eat this whole thing. It's just so much sodium involved in here. It's very good, though.
cheesesteak missions in August, huh? <clears throat> I guess that's a Philly thing. If you're going to do the cheesesteak, you need to go to Philly. Unfortunately, I'm probably going to end up gaining a few pounds over the next, uh, I don't know, however long I'm gone. It's hard to not eat good when you're in New York. There is a place that they, uh, that my buddy Matt, it was like one of the last days I was, I was doing sound in a sound booth, and he got me this bowl of something i don't know some healthy stuff it was it was really good though uh yeah philly thing i'm in new jersey but love the cheesesteaks uh you know you, new jersey and philly they uh they both have good cheesesteaks from what i've heard and of course new york has good cheesesteaks as well you just got to know where to go I'm glad I could make it tonight. This was a great to watch. And good night, Smokey. Well, good night, Gusto. Thank you for the super chats tonight. You guys go check out RC Gusto's channel. Just watch his videos. It's free for you. Creates revenue for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. You can't beat that. All right. I should stop, but I'm not. I'm going to take at least one more big bite of these taters. Like so. One more big bite of ham, like so, and another bite of cracker. Yeah, they all mix really well together, though. I mean, just the ham and the crackers, mm, just the ham and the crackers go really well together. If these were fresh, like 30 years ago fresh... I feel like they'd be a lot better, you know? This is 30 years old. Holy crap. <clears throat> so my entire meal tonight has been at least 30 years old. Dinner and a beer. Let's see about this coffee back here before we get into that jelly. Let's see. Huh. Well, that's actually pretty tasty for a cup of coffee out of a ration. Wow. That is a really decent cup of coffee. It's uh, very smooth. No bitterness. No. Uh, it's just got a really nice light coffee flavor. It's not too heavy. Not too, uh, not too strong. Not too light. Hey, Dub C with a $10 Super Chat says... Have fun in New York City, Old Smokey. Be safe. And hello, everyone. I did mention Dub C is, is currently in a uh, igloo, or a, I guess a little snow cave igloo type deal, where it's about 30, 32 degrees or something like that in there. And uh, he said he does ha he had signal so he could actually watch the stream. You guys, go check out Dub C's store. I think it's just called Dub C's store. Link in my description. And also Dub C's channel. He's got some fantastic videos over there where he's putting tons of work into every single video that he uploads over there i mean especially the ones where he's going camping uh like he is right now he's literally right now filming a video so you guys gotta go check that out all right here we go mm. all right i gotta stop Whoa, Miss Sharon, this is the place to be on Saturday night. <laughs> well, thank you, Miss Sharon. I think some people would disagree, but I'm glad that you think so. Thank you for that super chat. Hmm. Yeah, I could easily eat all that. Easily. I know I shouldn't, but I'm probably going to. I just keep coming back for more. Yep. All 
All right, I gotta quit. I think now it's time to see if this funky brownie. Well, I guess what it looks like on the inside. Whoa. So that was really easy to break. I've had them before where I could not break them open. They were harder than a rock. This was actually very soft. Huh. Well, you can see the nuts have went very dark in there, which is to be expected. I mean, they're in a dark, in a chocolate batter, soaking for 30 years, so they're going to go dark anyway. Um, it smells... It smells sour. It smells like... I don't know what that smells like, man. It's got this weird... I don't know. It, it, it doesn't smell right. I'm going to give it a try anyways, though. I guess. Down the hatch with this... What's... Oh, God, I hate eating these things. They're just never any good. All right, here we go. Way too big a bite. Mm. Yeah, no. Ooh. Mm. Ugh. It's coated my entire mouth, but it doesn't taste bad like other ones I've had before. The nuts aren't, uh, they're not reacting in my mouth. <clears throat> they're not numbing my mouth. <clears throat> Maybe having a little bit of reaction in my throat. Um, you know, I don't know. I need to get a better gauge. I guess I got to take another bite. I mean, it definitely does have a chocolate type of, I don't know, it doesn't really taste like chocolate, but kind of reminds you of chocolate. It has a slightly sour flavor to it. As far as I can tell, the nuts are okay, though. You know, I can't, I'm not getting any ill effects or side effects from that. But it does definitely coat your mouth with a very thick film. Which I think is just probably from the fats in it. Oh, we'll see you later, G. Schultz. Um, G. Schultz actually ordered one of the freeze-dried ham slices like I had last week. Uh, he ordered it with that 40% off sale. And he said he's going to use it in the live stream. So it'll be cool to see what G. Schultz's thoughts are on that same exact meal that I had. I'm going to see if I can get that film out of my mouth with this uh, really nice looking cocoa beverage powder. Oh, God, that's so good. That is, I mean, it's so good. That's like chocolate candy drink. It's so sweet and chocolatey and creamy and mmm. Everything about that is spot on. That's exactly what it should be. Uh, I will say, like, it's kind of sugary for a hot chocolate for me. But it does taste amazing. All right, let's go. Yeah, hoping to go live on Friday or the following Friday. Looking forward to trying the freeze-dried ham out. Well, cool, dude. Uh, just let me know, and I'll let everybody else know, and uh, I'll be there. I might be in New York. But uh, I'll be there. I was hoping to get G. Schultz out to New York with me <laughs> uh, this time again. Because uh, I guess it would have been roughly about this time last year or maybe a little before. I can't remember. But uh, we did a live stream together. 
and uh, we did it in New York City from my hotel room at the Edison. I tried to stay at the Edison this time. They're, they're actually closed until uh, the middle of next month, possibly. They've been closed for months. Oh, boy. This is just a mess. Look at all that that's spilled out there on the tray. Yeah, that's unfortunate. All right, let's try out this apple jelly. There it is. Kind of dark. Ox you know, oxygen's got to it, but here we go. But yeah, me and G. Schultz had a really good time. Got to hang out afterwards. Kind of got to really know each other, which is good. That's how you really build a community. When you get to meet up with people face to face, you get to see if they're fake, <laughs> you know, if they're putting on an act for their videos, or if they're just the same way in real life as they are in their videos. And I would say, I mean, this is obviously my own opinion um, of myself. But G. Schultz is exactly how you would think he would be. Um, really great guy. And he was fun to hang out with. And uh, I feel like I'm, I'm the same way in person as I am on these videos. I know some of you guys out there have met me before. You guys would be a, I'm a lot better judge of that than I am. But uh, that's how, I, I mean, I try, I try to live that way. I feel like I'm the same way on the TV show as I am in real life. <laughs> and uh, I don't put on an act. A lot of these YouTubers do. And there's a market for that. Absolutely. Well, thank you, G. Schultz. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I, I, I try to just keep it real. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty simple, I think. As long as, as, if you keep it real, I mean, of course, there's personal things that I, I think are, are, should stay personal, and I think there's some things that are, are better left unsaid. But at the same time, like, you know, if I do choose to share something with you guys or talk to you guys about something, then, you know, it's, it's my true opinions or it's my true thoughts. That's what I'm trying to get at. Not that I would, like, change what I would say or what I would do. I mean, I guess I take that back because the way YouTube is now, I am way more PC, politically correct, like, the way I speak on here versus what I would be in person, if that makes any sense. I mean, guys, I worked on a, on a boat. I was for basically a sailor for 10, 12 years, and then I, I was in construction before that. Like, yeah, you know, I... I definitely uh, let some cuss words fly here and there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just kind of, like I said, I mean, that's kind of the, the way I came up and what I've been through. But uh, apple jelly, what did I say about that? Eh, it's actually pretty good. Really kind of lacking on, on some hardcore flavor as far as the apple jelly goes. Well, see, and it's it's very runny. Uh, there we got some solid, some solid chunks out there. But if you guys seen, I, I I took my finger and licked all that up. So, anybody who's not should go subscribe to G Schultz. And I just saw JW pop in there. You guys should should go check out JW's channel. I enjoyed watching his videos the other day. As soon as I get back from New York, I got some things to get caught up on through the channel and stuff. And uh, I have to ship a set of wheels all the way to Australia for Dan. <laughs> That's going to be fun. I'm going to try to pack a couple rations in those in those aluminum wheels and see if they make it through customs. <laughs> I don't know if they will or not. They might. They might not. I, it'll be interesting to see if they do. I'm at least going to tape one MRE into the inside of one of those wheels. Oh, no problem, JW. No problem, man. Uh, yeah, that, that, that apple jelly, even though it's... Uh, 
definitely uh, been damaged by oxygen. It tastes perfectly fine. I would say it's probably lost some of its flavor over the years. And then again, maybe it's gained some. Apple jelly's always been kind of bland to me. It's never been like a, a really strong flavor. I actually kind of was hoping, I hate to say this, Bob, but I was actually kind of hoping that this wasn't going to be any good and I was going to get to eat some of the stuff that I've got over here to the side. I don't even know what all I've got over here. Move, kitty. Let's see what all I got. Well, if I can keep the stinking box open. All right, there we go. Got some mains over here. Going to be giving away one of these here in the uh, in in the box that I'll be sending out soon. They don't make them anymore. You can't get these anymore. The uh, camping spork with the with the knife on the back of it and whatnots. Right here's one out of the package. Mine's missing the lanyard though. There's my knife. I guess I nicked up my knife pretty good. That or it was that way when I got it. I'm not sure. It's hard to say. But yeah, one of those is going to be going out. Yeah, I guess it is supposed to have a lanyard on it, though. What, what's the deal with that? Oh, it's not attached. Huh. Okay. Well, it comes with a lanyard. It's got a got an instant strawberry milk there. Oh, I got this just to have for uh, my collection to sit on the shelf because it's a Canadian trucker sauce kit. Pretty special. <laughs> Pretty special. Can't I don't want to set it in no ham juices. Uh, got one of those chocolate cookies and cream mousses. These things are amazing. What else do we have in here? Here we go. Freeze dried sirloin steak cubes with rice and vegetables. See, I was kind of hoping to have to eat something like this. What else? do we have in here? We got a chicken and rice. Got a dub seed dessert, which is butterscotch pudding. I, I really want to try this. I don't know if I should just eat it on my own or actually open it in a video, but there you go. Dub seed logo there. Is the penguin. Mm, had the mixed berry drink mix here. Had a pumpkin spice shake. Uh, vanilla pudding. And a pumpkin spice whipped topping. And they got all kinds of uh, different options over there. What, uh, what do we have here? Here's a uh, dark chocolate cinnamon swirl oatmeal. That might be all right. I thought I had another main in here. Hang on. Here we go. There we go. Arizona chili with beans. I want to try that. That looks, uh, I mean, I like chili. You guys saw that video I just put out. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's the IMP chili. I swear, it was like that chili, that the Canadian chili, it's like it was made for me, made for my palate. It was just perfect. Slightly spicy, tons and tons of beef in there, not too heavy on the beans. The the tomato sauce and, and juice that they used in that chili was just, oh, I wish I had another IMP chili to eat right now. Like, I would, I would dig into it right now just because I'm talking about it, I'm craving it. All right, so we had chili. What else? Oh. And we have a rosemary chicken with broccoli and rice. 790 calories in there. 
But yeah, I've got a bunch of this stuff here. I mean, I could easily put together a meal with this. Wait. This is what I was talking about right here. Earlier, the MRE biscuit right there. This is what should be in every sausage gravy MRE. Should come with a biscuit. I mean, why not? These things are stop sign shaped. They're octagon. There's a flat spot. Let me show you without opening it. See how it's shaped. Yep, flat, flat. And same here. Yeah. The MRE biscuit, very short lived. It was only around for a year or two. But uh, any of this stuff that I just had out here, I'm sure you can still go over to Minotaur and pick it up. What is in this? That's got is that crackers in the back? What is that? I can't tell. I thought everything in here was great. Hmm. I don't know. Have to open it up. MRE Biscuit. I had no idea those existed. Yeah, yeah, they were very short-lived. They, they weren't around for very long. Uh, I'm going to say maybe, maybe three years, but I think it was only two. They made it into the Sausage uh, Gravy MRE in, I think, 2011 and 2012. I'm pretty sure in 2013 they were gone. I'm pretty sure. Almost positive. So yeah, they, they they didn't... I don't know why they didn't stick around. I've personally never had one. The only one that I ever had in my possession was contained in, an, in a sausage uh, gravy MRE, and I gave that MRE away. At the time, I don't even know that I realized that I had the biscuit, but uh, looking back at it, I was like, oh man, that would have had that biscuit in it. So yeah, I need to find one on eBay or somewhere, somebody who has... A 2011 or 2012 sausage gravy MRE, and I would I would like to try it with the biscuit. I think it might be only 2011 that comes with the biscuit. I don't know. I'd have to check. And here I am going for more ham. I shouldn't be eating this ham. Mm. But it's just so good. Who would have ever thought that 30 years later this piece of ham would be getting eaten? I mean, I'm sure the people that packaged this uh, never would have uh, dreamed that that would be the case. Hmm. Christine, yep. Dub C, he did do a video with one. Yep. I can't remember who I gave that MRE to. For some reason, I want to say it was... Um, Mr. Browning, 1911. For some reason, I think I gave him that MRE. I think he wanted it because it had the biscuit in it, if I remember right. And he told me that, and I was like, I'd, I'd already told him he could have it. And then he told me, he's like, oh, yeah, it's got the biscuit in it. And I was like, oh, man, I already told him he could have it. Mm -mm -mm. I'm definitely going to end up finishing that. I'm just curious. How much sodium? If it even tells us, it does not. Nope. Smoke flavor added. I don't pick that up at all. Cured with water, salt, sugar, sodium phosphate, sodium alithrobate, smoke flavoring, and sodium nitrate. Friggin' sodium nitrate. Hmm. Look at that. Distributed by the Pillsbury Company. What? Pillsbury making ham slices? What's the deal with that? I thought they were like a flour and biscuit company. You know, mainly bread products. Cinnamon rolls, biscuits, croissants. Huh. I'll be daggone. I never would have never would have guessed Pillsbury 
packing ham slices in MREs. Stella, shut up. I gotta go let this dog out. Be right back, guys. She's gotta go out. I guess she's gotta go out. Okay. Hmm. I don't wanna. You know what? This is the only one of these that I have, but, and, you know, I don't even really, I, I'm going to eat this, right? I want to try it. I, I want to try this right now. I don't think the four ounces of water will fit in this pouch, but I guess I'll try it, and hopefully if I end up really liking it, maybe Dub C will send me another one. <laughs> maybe. Just maybe. All right, let's see. If I can get it open. What did I forgot to cut my toe or my toenails, my fingernails today too. Look at that. Oh, come on. It's about to drive me crazy. go I do not think that the four ounces of water has absolutely no smell to it so butterscotch pudding dub C are you still in the comments buddy if you are I would like to know if the four ounces of water will actually fit in this or do I need to use a bowl let me read the instructions so it says add four ounces of water to the pouch I just don't see it happening. I really don't see it happening. I'll give it a try. Four ounces. All right, we'll see. Four ounces of water. Alright, there we go. Four ounces of water. Uh, Miss Marilyn says, don't put four ounces. <sighs> okay. Four ounces is too much, I assume. Will it just not fit in the pouch, Miss Marilyn? Or what? Now, you guys, don't forget, 4nmre.com, code OS10, get you 10 bucks off your cases fresh cases of MREs or first strike rations. I should do like affiliate stuff and <laughs> make something off of doing what I do, but I don't I don't do that. I just pass the savings along, guys. Uh Miss Marilyn okay, so it'll be runny if I put the four ounces in. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you for that tip. Uh and well, before I get started, I'm pulling out one of these bad boys right here. In the gold pouch, and I'm gonna have a palm oil. Oh, I'm gonna have a palm oil before, or not before, just while I'm shaking up this pudding. All right, here we go. Where's my lighter? I don't know what happened to my Vegas lighter. So I guess I just have to use the one that's sitting here. Hmm. Pretty light on the first drag, I gotta say. Okay, so I'm not gonna put all this water in. Let's go for uh, a little more than half of it, I would say. All right, we'll start with that. I can always add more water. Look at that color. It's an awful looking color <laughs> to start with. Get that bad boy sealed up. Fold the top over and give it a shake. 
my slinging water here. Well, that thickened up quick. Ugh. Well, that might have done it. That might have done it. Well, my, my main light right here, the one that provides the majority of the light for the live stream, or should I say it's it's the brightest and warmest light, I guess, it quit working last week. <clears throat> and I did think about it through the week. I was like, oh crap, I got to get that light bulb because it's a really weird, very strange light bulb. It's like a, I don't know, it, it's, it's, it's not a screw-in light bulb, it's a plug-in light bulb. It's, and it's like that big but it quit working and I thought about it through the week I come in here I tested the lamp it still wasn't working and I was going to take the light bulb out so I could get the numbers off of it and then I forgot about it after that somehow and then I came back in here earlier today and I was like I gotta take that light bulb out and whenever I touched the light up there with the screwdriver it came back on and I was like holy crap well, of course, it's, I was thinking, of course, it's going to not come back on if I turn it off. So I turned it off and turned it back on. It came on, so it was good to go. Couldn't believe it. Uh, I, I don't know if it's halogen or not, Kalen. It's just a little tiny bulb about that big. No, it's a filament bulb. It's got, to, it's got filaments in it. It's just super, super bright. Extremely bright. Um... It's got a ultraviolet filter on it, a UV filter, and uh, I, my guess is you could probably grow things underneath this thing. You could probably grow plants and, and stuff like that underneath it. It's very, very, very intense. Oh, how, okay, well, yeah, it could very well be a halogen then, Tracy. Go <laughs> a little tiny halogen. Well, what do you guys think? Do you think that's that's good? Or should I add more water? Focus camera. There we go. All right. Looking pretty smooth. Looking like looking like pudding kind of. <clears throat> Real thick, almost like caramel, though. All right, I gotta go let the stupid dog in. My son let her put her out and then just walked off instead of letting her back in. I gotta take you guys outside. You know what? Let's just go do that right now. Hang on. Let me unplug you guys. We gotta go see the snow and the icicles hanging off my house outside. Dog's already been fed. <laughs> yeah. Dog's already ate. Alright. Here we go back the camera up a little bit I'll flip the camera back around as soon as we get outside here and yeah, we had about six inches of snow or so I mean that's how much we had at one time we had more than that come in but uh, I'm turn the camera around oh, no, turn the camera around yeah check that out <laughs> I don't know if you can tell how big those things are but uh, they're pretty massive. I would say that one right there is four to five inches thick at the very top up there. And we got plenty of snow on the ground. <laughs> That's what she said. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, really, really good icicles out there, though. Focus on me, camera. 
Yeah, they, it is, they are really nice, the, the, uh, the icicles that are out there right now. Got a new uh, cell phone mount here that I'm using, and I'm um, looking to order some more equipment tonight, hopefully some camera equipment, and uh, might order some stuff for what me and Gabe got planned to do here coming up real soon. I would say this is probably best eaten when it's really, really cold, like uh, out of the fridge kind of cold, but let's just find out. I'm not big on, you know, I can't just eat a big spoonful of pudding. I have to just eat a little tiny bit because the texture kills me. But, I don't know, let's find out. Butterscotch pudding of the, of the Dub C variety. Dub C dessert variety. All right, here we go. All right, let me try to smell it. No, oh, it definitely smells like butterscotch candy. It had no smell before, before the water, but now it's definitely got a very, like translucent color to it hmm it's not too rich which I was kind of expecting it to be very very rich that's too much that's too much on the spoon just one second where from For Wendy's, but I just probably eat Wendy's. I'm not eating. I've got mm. I wonder if it's open even. Possibly. Whoa, there's actually a good bit of pudding in here. I'll just put way too much on there. Um, hmm. Yeah, I can't eat all that in one bite. I have to kind of like lick my way through it. Oh, geez. Jokes and put your joke in the comments. I mean, it's like eating liquid candy. Liquid butterscotch candy. I've never had butterscotch pudding before. But this doesn't really remind me a lot of pudding. You want to try this? I mean, it's butterscotch. You like butterscotch? Yeah. Try it just a little bit. Yeah. Mm. You want her to eat yours for tonight, so. Here, you want, here, try this first. <laughs> Usually wouldn't do this to you, but. What is it? Well, just tell me after I eat it, maybe. No, oh, yeah. Huh? That's salty. Yeah, it's salty. It's good though, man. It? It's good ham. It's ham, right? It's ham. It's a ham slice. I think it's awesome. Pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. You were a guy. It's Thirty years old. Really? Yeah. You'd never guess it was thirty that's what years I was old. To say. How big of a spoonful do you want? Like a, an actual spoonful? Yeah. That'd be, I can't take a spoonful of that type of stuff. So you guys heard his reaction to the ham slice, I think. It smells pretty good. It is. It's actually really good. It's not like too sweet. I mean, it's sweet. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's like candy, but it's not like overly rich, I guess is the word I'm looking for. It's like the syrup that comes in the jar. That's that exactly we can't get like. anymore. We can't get butterscotch uh, syrup? syrup anymore. Like you put on That's the what, cake, yeah, the butterfinger cake? Yeah, we can't get that. Huh. That's what it tastes like. It's but a yeah. little bit thicker than that. It's actually... Like, well, I mean, this is thick. Yeah, that's pudding. It's a little thicker than... The, that's what it tastes like. Well, you can control how thick this is by put how much more, water more you put in it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Man. I gotta get more of these. Yeah, definitely... Uh, if this was a limited thing in Dub C, if you got like a stash of these things, let me know, dude. I need, I need at least one or two more of those. Yeah, that's good. I didn't think I was going to taste like that. That's pretty good. I can't believe that ham's 30 years old. Like, yeah, it's it's really good. Yeah, I'd have never known that had you not told me. Nothing else here I would recommend you eating. 
Uh, What's that? The goopy looking stuff top left. This? Yeah. The cheesy potatoes. Yeah. All gratin potatoes. Brownie. Oh, yeah. Yikes. It's a brownie. It's... That's probably one of the best brownies I've ever had out of these. I, they, they were never good, I don't think. I don't think they were ever like, hmm, these are wonderful. I mean, it's mm. it's dry, kind of <laughs> chalky. Uh, the flavor's just, I mean, it's kind of got a, it, it, it's a chocolate-esque -esque, a chocolate -esque flavor, but it doesn't taste like chocolate. It's kind of chocolate-ish. Like, it's like a 10-cent protein bar. That's horrible. It's awful, yeah. They're not. They're not good. I mean, but I don't. Uh, again, I don't think they were ever good from the very beginning. I don't think these things, when they were new, I don't think these things were good. I would love to have one of these, like fresh, brand like new. yeah, like when they first made it. But probably not very good. I don't think they were good then either. Yeah, I don't think they were much different than what what you just had. Unless it was a little more damp. I don't think so. I don't think so, man. They, they can't be because they they spoil. Like yeah, they and the heat and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's really bad. Uh, you just want like hamburgers from McDonald's. Uh, I figure that's what he's gonna want. We're talking about. Yeah, or I'll eat Taco Bell. Whichever. What do you want? He's gonna like. He's, I know he wants Taco Bell. What do you want from there? Um, I want one of those chicken and rice tacos. Okay. Um. Uh. A fry with like the meat and cheese on it, maybe. Not sure. Not sure. Fry bell. Yeah, probably. whatever that is. Yeah. Um, and a regular taco. Regular. Crunchy. Yep. All right. Well, okay. I only smoked half my cigarette. Get back to this with you guys. Okay. I guess I do have some spare water here. I don't know what to do with. I'll set it over here. Out of the way. So this actually ended up being really good, guys. I gotta say, I would recommend this for sure. Definitely recommend that. My snow was wet and heavy. Joe says, "Mmm, talking about yeah, that's what we're having tonight, I guess." I mean, honestly, I could probably not eat because I've eaten the majority of this ham slice and almost a whole cracker. I mean, and a couple bites. I, I don't know. I could definitely survive on what I've eaten here tonight. But uh, why not? I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't eat. I don't know. I probably shouldn't eat. Mm. The ham slice is amazing, though. Really good. Bob, I'm glad you sent this to me, man. I appreciate having it. This is one of the thickest ham slices I've, I've ever had, too. A lot of times, I mean, I, this one is a little bit thicker than, than they normally are. Normally, they're a little bit thinner than that. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're supposed to get snow tomorrow, too. I forgot about that. Hmm. Oh, wow. Art just said, well, I don't know if he just said, but said they only have about um, about 10 cases left. I don't know if 10 cases of first strike rations or 10 cases of MREs, but uh, obviously they've sold quite a few cases of, uh, of MREs and stuff. You know, that's a really good cup of coffee, too. I'm super surprised. I'm just reading some chat. Yeah, Monday, uh, it's definitely supposed to rain here, and uh, so I'm going to be on an airplane, I think probably when it's, about when it's snowing, so hopefully my flight doesn't get canceled, 
I just happened to be looking at the television the other day. I never watch the news, hardly ever. I mean, I do a little bit just to kind of see what they're talking about or what they're lying about, I should say. Freaking mainstream media, I hate them. Uh, hate's a strong word. I really dislike them. I try not to hate anything. Um, they, uh, let's see, was probably about five, six days ago, they canceled a hundred flights out of uh, LaGuardia. It was out of LaGuardia. A hundred flights. Could you imagine being stuck in the airport with a hundred other people's flights that were just canceled? They'd have to send you to a hotel or something, right? I don't know. I don't know how that would work. Or you just got to camp out in the in the airport and wait. I mean, I've had issues flying before. A couple times, actually. One time we were flying for the show. We were in... Uh, I think we were in Pittsburgh. Or... I... You know, it's really hard for me to tell... We were somewhere, we were somewhere, and we were we were flying out. I think I think it was Pittsburgh. I think it was after we we filmed uh, Josh's family's bar, uh, the Backdoor Tavern, and after we filmed uh, Yellow Dog, and we were flying back to New York, and we got on our flight. Is this the time we got on our flight? Yeah. Okay. We got on the flight and was like getting ready to. to, to taxied out to take off and the plane quit <clears throat> they sent us back they taxied us back and this is after an hour of sitting there taxied us back got us off the plane because it was that bad like that we weren't going to be able to get back you know they they weren't going to be able to get it going we went back in sat down they gave us all vouchers for like thirty dollars or something to go get something to eat and we came back and they were like okay we got it fixed we're gonna we're gonna get you guys back on the plane we got back on the plane sat down for like 10 minutes they tried to fire the airplane up and it wouldn't it wouldn't work took us back off the airplane again for the second time and we thought sure we're going to go get on a different airplane of course <laughs> something's definitely wrong with this one and uh, that was the plan that was the plan that they had that was what they told us we got off the plane we went and sat down and it was going to be like an hour or two or something like that before we'd get another plane well about the time that two hour mark rolled around or hour or two however long it was they they was like up oh, we got your, we got your guys's plane fixed we're gonna we're gonna have you guys board back on this one for the third time when the first two times basically the thing had quit on us and like never been so freaked out before in my life other than one other time <clears throat> that I think it was the second it was it was the second time I ever flew in an airplane. It was my flight home from the first time I'd ever flown anywhere. And me and my wife were on the airplane. I was I was kind of freaked out, I'm not gonna lie. We they taxied us out. You know, we taxied out. They didn't, you know, nothing pulled us out there. The airplane under its own power went out to uh, where we'd staged to get onto our um, runway. And as we went to leave our staging area to get onto our runway, like whenever they pushed the sticks forward to accelerate the airplane to, to kind of fuel it up, you know, make the make it speed up, the the airplane shut down on us. Completely shut down and it would not start back up. And that time they took us back and they could not fix the airplane. And I, I just kept thinking like what if that would have happened a minute or two later, or however long it would have taken us to get in the air, you know, 30 seconds later, however long it would have been, not very long, whenever we would have got up in the air and then the engines would have cut out. Like, we would have just fell to the ground. Like, it it freaked me out, man. Freaked me out. Captain Sinclair, yeah, I've had some pretty close calls, I guess you would say, with a couple flights that I was on. That first time was was definitely the one that that scared it scared the crap out of me. I ain't gonna lie, it definitely got to me. I got really bad anxiety after that, and uh, when I got on that other flight, they were offering me beers and like cold rags to put on my neck because I was <laughs> I was legitimately freaked out. And as well, 
everyone else on that flight should have been the same way. Like it, it was just, it was a traumatic. I mean, I guess it wasn't super traumatic or anything. Nothing happened. Nothing really happened other than, I guess if you think about it too hard, you realize you could have lost your life had that plane been in the air when the engines cut out like they did. It kind of sucked. But yeah, I would definitely recommend this uh, butterscotch pudding. It's it's pretty banging. Very much like eating liquid candy. Which I guess is what it's supposed to be like. I don't know. But I wouldn't call it pudding. I don't know what I would call it. Like, butterscotch gel is more like it. Wish I had some crabs. I'm not a big seafood kind of guy, really. I, eh, it's just, eh. I, I'd really like to have a crawfish boil or whatever, a crawfish, you know, jumbo, whatever. That's what I'd really like to have. But all right, guys, this has been a good live stream. I appreciate each and every one of you guys coming and hanging out. I really appreciate each and every one of the Super Chats. Miss Sharon, RC Gusto, uh, Jeff. Uh, sorry about that, guys. The live stream cut off. Uh, let me see. That's definitely not going to show me my stinking Super Chats now because the live stream just cut off. Just shut off on me and uh, trying to go from memory here. Let me go, can I go and see it from YouTube? Is that possible? Hmm, let's just find out, shall we? Alright, let's go back, Super Chat, super, nope, no one lets me go back that far. Oh, nope, it just let me go back further. Oh, hang on. Come on, stop it. Hmm, nope. Live chat. Hmm. Can I go back? Hang on. What if I do this? And then I close out the chat. Bring it back up. Nope. It only shows me the current chat. Oh, yeah, guys. Do not forget the Ration Museum tomorrow. Uh, let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Probably already scheduled. It is not. <laughs> Anyways, here it is. The Ration Museum every Sunday. Guys, come and hang out. If we hit 40, 40 viewers over there, so if every one of you guys would show up over there, I would do another giveaway over there. Um, I hope that we can hit that 40 mark. Then I hope we can hit that 50 mark. Yep, it cut out on me again. Whoops. Flip around. Anyways, I guess I could just talk this way. This is fine. Oh. But yeah, guys, tomorrow at, uh, well, he's been starting sometimes at 3 o'clock, sometimes at 5 o'clock. I think tomorrow's is going to start at 5 o'clock. Um, how did the beer taste? Uh... It wasn't wasn't very good. It definitely not good. But it didn't have a bad aftertaste. So the initial the, you know the initial flavor of it not very good. Kind of had a strong almost lemongrass scent and flavor to it. Somewhat bitter and uh you know not a bad aftertaste. So wasn't bad. Um Joe Green on the, I I'm not on any discords. I didn't I don't even know how to do that to be honest. I know it makes me sound old. But Discord is something I've never gotten into. I've never gotten into Reddit either. I, I for some reason I, I put those two they correlate for me. I, I know that they don't. Uh is Discord an app that I need to download? Let me go to the Play Store. Here. lose my chat yeah I'm probably not I doubt I'd be a big fan of discord either um, 
I am on the uh, I'm on Slack, which is. But as far as like the Rash Museum, I I talk to Sean all all the time. Me and him, we were on the phone for like an hour today. But let's see, let's see what Discord. Okay, maybe I do have Discord, or I have had Discord before. Your place to talk. Uh, is it like a video chat thing? What is this? Want to watch the next? You know, free to watch. Maybe 8 p.m. Works for me. Your place to talk with friends and communities. Uh, see who's hanging out and join without having a call. Hmm. I should definitely join the Discord. Huh. Keep the conversation going on mobile and PC. Organize any community with roles and permissions. Maybe I can start my own Discord. Maybe I, I maybe I can start. Can't you start your own Reddit? Is that a thing? Like, couldn't we like start a Reddit thread or something? Uh, and like an old smoky Reddit thread or something, something like that. Hat really itches my head big time. Hmm. Well, I don't think uh, I don't think Reddit has an app yet. I think you have to do. Uh, should be able to. I rarely use Reddit. I've never understood Reddit. I've tried to use Reddit a few times. I've tried to use Discord a few times. Seems like whenever I tried to use Discord, it, there was no app. Or maybe there was, and I just didn't understand it. That may have been it. Uh, I was trying to catch all the super chats. It was Jeff. It was RC Gusto. CT. Uh, subscribe to CT. Uh, also, Ration Museum link should be down in my description. Oh, I guess I did have it downloaded. Hmm. Yep, there it is. Discord. I guess I'm going to register. You register with your phone number. Seeing it live. Registering on Discord. <laughs> Okay, so 51, 4, 52. Okay. Let me type it. What should everyone call you? Well, I think Old Smokey would be appropriate. Okay. I'm going to do... Let me double check that. Okay. You gotta give your date of birth. I don't like that. Can I lie? Definitely feel old when you gotta scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll down. Oh, there's my birthday. There's my birth year. Remember when you do you remember back whenever you first started using a smartphone and like how far down you didn't have to scroll like you were how long ago was that 15 years ago now this is my first smartphone 2007 15 something around right, about 15 years ago my god that's a long time ago I think that was the first smartphone I got it was 2007 or 2008 or it might have been later than that. It might have been 2009 or 10 before the first time I got a smartphone. I went a long time with a flip phone, man. I was I was hardcore. I don't need that technology. Screw that crap. Stupid smartphones. And My old lady ended up talking me into getting one. The rest is history after that, I guess. Okay, so... 
create your server. Your server is where you and your friends hang out, make yours. Okay, I'm going to create my own, form a club or community for me and my friends. Uh, let's, let's form a community. Old Smoky Server. I'm going to upload a picture. Mm, I guess. Uh, I gotta find it in the gallery. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna have to pull it off. Of... Ay, ay, ay. I'll take it from there. There it is. I'm gonna crop that bad boy. I'm gonna crop Josh out of it. <laughs> Mm. I can't crop him out of it. I can't get original. I guess that'll work the picture I ended up with for the focus on it. Stupid camera, come on. Anyway, create server. Let's get you ready to talk. What's the topic of your groups? Um, Want to go with rations, comma, MREs. I know I'm being boring, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> Invite a friend to your server. Um, there you go. There's the there's the link to the server. Is that backwards? Hang on. Is that backwards? I think it is for you guys. I think that's I think it's backwards. Yeah, it is. HTTPS uh, semicolon backslash backslash discord dot gg backslash e big d b a big s little k big y five x c. That is share link. How do I do this? Oh, I'll just copy the link and I will post it on YouTube. How's that sound? But all right, guys. I'm going to finish this one up. Thank you guys all for coming again to Saturday. And look for me to pop up through this week, like I mentioned before. And uh, I, I swear I feel like I'm missing somebody in the Super Chat area. Uh, Miss Sharon. Had CT twice, had Gusto twice, had Jeff, had, oh, there was one that I'm missing. Which one was it? They didn't say anything. Who was it? Can't remember who it was. Uh, I'm not seeing the name pop up in the chat right now. It wasn't Horny Animal this week. It was... I don't know if I if I'm forgetting I'm sorry. I'm, I tried, <laughs> but thank you guys for uh, another great week of a live stream here, the Saturday Night Smoke Show. Thank you guys, and thank to each and every one of my patrons that hang out over there and contribute to the channel. I thank you guys. I've still saved every single penny that I've ever gotten from that, other than the one time I took the money out and bought a laptop with it. Um, so that was a okay, and every, right now I've saved up everything in there over the past year and a half, I believe, is, is roughly about how long I've saved up in there. So um, hopefully one of these days something will come up to where it's like, yep, that's that's why I saved that money was to buy that, to buy that set of K rations, to buy that, um, you know, what I seen there was three packs of World War II era C ration smokes accessory packets that were just on eBay. Last time I looked, they were at $355. And 
the thing was that they were in super rough shape, and I was just bidding on a case of uh, MCIs. I bet you I lost them. I almost guarantee you I lost them because, yep, I did. There they are. They went for 203 bucks. Right before the live stream, I bid them up to where I was high bidder, and uh, none of the cigarettes are in here, but this is a, a case from 1965 that looks to be in very good shape. Very good shape. No big stains, no nothing. I mean, all the accessory packets are missing the cigarettes, but that's it. Everything else is there. And uh, it's it's not worth 250 bucks. I'm sorry. I mean, it's just not. Is it? Let me think here. Yeah, no, that's that's really pushing it on, on the value there. It's really, I guess it just depends on how bad you wanted that, that case and, and the boxes. But as far as what's in there, like most of the mains in there are going to be nasty and bulging and no, you know, obviously no count. And uh, there's going to be some white breads in there. There's going to be a few B units, um, you know, some, some pecan nut roll chocolate nut roll stuff like that that's yeah it would be really hard to justify this being worth 250 bucks i mean it's 203.75 plus shipping plus taxes on that would be another at least 15 so be two about, about 260 265 something like that way too much yeah, here. Let's just, uh... Hey, what's going on, Bob Nash? Oh, and I'm kicking myself so hard for missing this. I'm... God, I regret missing this. <clears throat> I, look, I know it's in really bad shape. I know it is. Like, I see it. Uh, it's got huge dents in it. It looks like somebody stood on it to screw in a light bulb or something. And, you know what? I, I want to get these old lifeboat and lifecraft rations that are in really bad shape like this one right here because this this is a great example of it's dented here it's dented here it's dented here and look how faded it is like i want to find some of these that are in what look to be really bad shape and then open them up and see maybe be completely surprised by what's inside you never know that's that's my point of wanting to get the ones that are really bad looking. But I can't believe I missed out on this the other day. I I totally forgot about it and missed out on it. And it I mean it sold for a hundred and basically hundred ten bucks. And then there was a World War II era one that sold for basically two hundred after taxes. That was in pretty rough shape. I ain't gonna lie. Like that's there's a huge. It's not coming across on screen. That whole side's caved in right there. Let's see if I can show it to you from a different angle. Look, see? The whole side's caved in all the way down the side. Um, but yeah, it was packed in 1945. It says it right there. So yeah, that would have been a good World War II era one. And this one possibly has actual deration bars in it in, in the cardboard. Not to say it does or doesn't. Or it could have the red... Hershey's Tropical Bars in it, which, I mean, if you have a perfect condition red Hershey's Tropical Bar, a two-ounce bar, it's worth anywhere in between two, two and two hundred fifty dollars. Like they're they're worth a lot of money. But yeah, it would have been nice to have to have had these to open up and see just how bad they were. And then here was a really nice one that sold. Also, this was this was newer though, it's 1965, but it was in really good shape. Yeah, 1965. So 20 years you newer than that other one, but this one sold for what 170, 180, about 195 after taxes. It's up there, 195 dollars. That one might be in 1965. I, it's not worth 195 bucks. Uh, that one right there is worth 100 bucks after taxes my opinion uh the world war ii era one in rough shape right there in my opinion i'd say it's worth about 140 150 in the shape that it's in and that's after you pay your taxes and stuff so that means it would have had to have sold for like 120 with shipping and this one you know 
I would have liked to paid like 60 bucks, 50, 60 bucks for that one. Just to find out, like this one looks amazing. I love the look of that. I mean, look at that thing. <laughs> if this thing could tell us its story, it would be it would be interesting. But all right, guys. Yeah, uh, here let me. I'll show you guys those accessory packets real quick. Uh, ended. Oh my goodness! <whistles> Holy cow! After taxes, we're talking eight fifty, eight hundred and fifty dollars for these things. And look, look how bad. Look at that. They every single one of them has bug holes in them. Every single one of them. Look, I don't know if I can show you. That's a bug hole. And let me tell you what. It just takes one bug hole like that for a, a weevil to get in there and just eat up the entire freaking thing. I mean, and these other ones being open the way they are, yeah, that they're most likely these things are dusty inside. The cigarettes are completely ate up by bugs. And uh, if there was any gum or anything in there, it's probably ate up as well. So it's unfortunate. And, but I'll tell you what, I don't know who would have bid these things up like that. Let me take a look here. Eight different bidders. But you, I can almost guarantee you it was the same two battling it out at the end. Well, I am wrong. Someone bid it up to 350 and then someone else bid it up to 500 And then someone else bid it up to seven, 763 and then the winner bid it up to seven seventy three. Absolutely crazy. Way too much money, guys. Way too much money for those. I mean, honestly, if if you had a nice one that didn't have bug holes in it, it would be worth two hundred bucks. That's about the value of one of those right now. In my in my personal opinion. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up, guys. Thanks again to my patrons. Thanks to everybody who sent a super chat in tonight. Really appreciate you guys. Please take the time to go check out all the different links and things like that that I have down in my description. There's a bunch of great stuff down there. Uh, good links to discounts on ration, ration items, cases over at foreignmre.com, uh, all kinds of stuff over at Minotaur and MRE Nation. Um, what else is down there in my description? Uh, it, Plenty of channels that you can go check out if you get bored. Uh, there's a ladies list down there. Oh, that reminds me. Hold up, guys. One more thing. I almost forgot about this. So, uh, hang on. Let me let me pull up the message. I have to use my search bar. Shocker seventy one. His wife. here she just started a uh, hang on let me just click on it so I'm not I don't want to give away his okay shocker 71 his wife started a YouTube channel I don't know why that just happened good videos looks like she's got one two three four very short videos up 14 seconds, 14 seconds, 10 seconds, 16 seconds, and 35 seconds. But I guess go over and check out her channel. Subscribe to her. I've actually met her a few times. My wife's met her too. Uh, hung out with her been about a year ago. Um, yeah, she's, she's really cool though. And very southern. She's got a very southern draw. So go subscribe to her channel. Uh, what was the name of that channel again? <laughs> I lost it. Dang it. Of course, I'm not going to... Hey, hey, hey. Uh, Doxy Mom, it looks like. MRE Wife Doxy Mom. Here we go. I, if I play a video, then I'll be able to find it easier. Okay. But yeah, go subscribe to her channel. She's only got seven subscribers right now, guys. Let's see if we can get that to go up. Right now, as we speak, can we get it to go up? I'll refresh. And let me get back to our home. We've got seven subscribers right now. Boom, going to eight. Hang on. Boom, going to eight. How come it didn't count it? Wait. Oh, it did. Cool. All right. 
All right, guys, that was the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys, if you guys want to check that out. Uh, I don't know what she's going to be posting over there. I just, Shocker's my dude, and I told him I'd tell you guys about uh, his old lady starting up a channel, and uh, she titled her channel MRE Wife, so might be worth checking out. All right, guys, thank you guys again. Like I said, everybody for the Super Chats, everybody in Patreon, everybody that shows up every Saturday, everybody that's in the Smoke family, the Smokey family here. And uh, one other request. Anybody would be able to point me in the right direction on how to make my own t-shirts and stuff because I need some help. I don't know what I'm doing. So anybody that would be willing to help me out with that, it would be greatly appreciated. Hit me up in an email. i got to check my emails tonight or tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, that's the last thing. So I guess really now all i got left to do is say thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you on the next live stream. Later.